why, when I let my guard down, do I say and do things that I regret later? Ugh. Moving forward with the Decker team. Moving forward together with the Decker team. We've enjoyed for over 30 years helping you not only sell and buy real estate, helping you build better finances, helping you build more fun into your life, helping you build your faith, and even helping you strengthen, heal, and flourish in your relationships. 30 years really of building life, home, and business. Mm. So yet, why is it that sometimes mm. I say and do things that I maybe regret later? Right, because environment is often more powerful than even our willpower or our intention. You know what? I just thought of a great example of that. Okay. It was back a couple of years ago when I still owned the Maserati. Yeah. And we, as an office, went to the racetrack to watch car racing on an oval track because a, a friend of ours or a client of ours was racing in it. And it's funny because that environment of watching people go fast and, and having fun and spin outs and whatever, the excitement, the adrenaline. When I left there, I took my traction control off and I just hit the gas a little bit when I was turning right onto the highway and the back end of the car just started spinning like it was on ice. Just back and forth. It was like, woo, this is cool. But then I thought, oh, I never knew it quite had that much power. But that was the environment changed the way I drove even that quickly. I'm grateful I only learned about this today. <laughs> In front of all our friends. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Great news. So it's a powerful point, And I'm a little bit speechless, but you're still going to learn how your mental state, your spiritual state, your emotional state, and even your physical state actually has an impact on how you do handle the environment you find yourself in. Ah, so when I have my deflectors on, <laughs> right? Yes. Then I can deflect some of that environment. But if my deflectors are down, if I'm not in a great emotional state, then I can be highly influenced by the wrong crowd. Right. If I haven't spent time with the Lord every day and spent time in the spirit, the tranquility room, haven't read scripture, haven't put the things in my mind that I know serve my beliefs, then it's much easier to be caught in the avalanche of whatever is going on around me. Mm. Right. And that applies to every area of my life even food. So keeping the right foods in our environment, now we're not talking people this time, but even keeping the right foods in my environment. How about the right people that bring the right foods when oh, they come to visit? Because if they bring the wrong foods, what happens, Yetta? Yetta eats them. <laughs> and it could be a problem. Not the people, she eats the food. <laughs> yeah, okay. What happens to you, Mr. Decker? What happens to me? I eat the food. Because exactly. it would be rude not to eat what people brought. Right. So that's, again, environment seems to outweigh my willpower. Because I may even have said before you come home, sometimes you're the environment creator <laughs> yes. with desserts from your favorite oh, dessert place. It's, it's like that commercial, I bet you can't eat just one. Right? If you open up a bag of chips and go, I'm just going to eat one, how does that work out for you? Not or well. for me. Not well. I'm just, the one I'm going to eat is the one at the bottom when I'm finished the bag. <laughs> <laughs> Even yeah, if it's a Costco family bag. Of chips. Yeah, I uh -huh. feel a little sick so at the end of it. it's not just about food. It's about <laughs> those attitudes and how we can get sucked in if we haven't shored ourselves up. And how would we shore ourselves up? That's an interesting word. Like, you shore up a pole that's leaning or... Something. Right. How would you shore yourself up? Well, by choosing in the first place what environments I will put myself in. 
Okay. Because that way I don't have to be on guard all the time and regret my decisions. So if, if I create, if I have a drinking issue, I don't go into a bar and order a Pepsi or a Coke. No. Right, because they have other stuff there. Exactly. But I could go into a general store and order a Pepsi or a Coke. Right. Unless you always used to drink Ryan Coke. And now that that's go that Coke is going to give you the taste. So creating an environment that serves you to your mm -hmm. highest version of yourself, okay. rather than creating an environment that causes distress. So right. I know there's some places I don't go because I know that when I leave there, my mouth is going to be a little bit foul. That's or, not a pretty thing. No, it's you really not. should brush your teeth when your mouth is foul. <laughs> you should. <laughs> That's not what I was talking about. Or okay. my attitude's going to be, I'm going to be complaining. Yes, I've noticed that once or twice. <laughs> and it isn't my normal way of being. Right. So when I so, let... Mm. Right. So you're going to go some of those places sometimes because you can't avoid it. Maybe it's your office. Maybe it's where you work. Maybe that environment's dragging you down a bit. So what, what things, what tips can you give us, Yetta, <laughs> to either not have the environment bother us or get out of the environment somehow? Right. So having my favorite yep. is actually the ally. The ally. The ally. Oh, that's like the wingman. The wingman, right. When, you're, when you go, yeah, you have the wingman and they, they're watching you. And if you're getting, you know... Too much, too much, uh, what do you call it, um, pestering of somebody or somebody of the opposite sex is making attractions to you and your wingman, in this case, is to protect you because they know you're married and they're going to pull you out of that situation. Right. That's so, a good wingman. Right. So having support, if you need to go into environments that don't always create the best outcomes for you. Right. Environments where it's not as safe. Right. For you, bring a buddy, a protection, mm -hmm. another lady or another man. Right. Right. <clears throat> cool. And another would be having predetermined, because most of the time we know what environments we're walking into. Sometimes we can get sideswiped. But most of the time, if it's not a new experience, we know what goes on in those environments. Mm -hmm. Right? And so being prepared with your plan to get out in advance. So preparation, an exit, an an exit, exit strategy. strategy. I right? love it. An yeah. exit strategy. Yeah, do, you, so, do you have like an example of that? I'm, I'm trying, trying to, to wrap my good one. brain So around that. if I'm going to a pool party, okay. which I've been to a few, right. I know that I don't do well with alcohol in my system. It okay. just doesn't do good for me. So as soon as I feel that person or persons where they where I almost feel intoxicated, but I haven't had anything to drink, but the environment is so intoxicating. As soon as I sense that, because that happens for me, you know that. Wow. Then I know it's time for me to go home, but I've predetermined that I don't put myself in that environment. Okay. For more than a few seconds. So or I have a few minutes or an hour or whatever. You determine how long you can stay in an environment. Mm-hmm. And your willpower will hold you back. Right. So I'm going to go for one hour and then I'm going home. Right. And have a buddy to make sure they drag you out at the or one hour Or if I mark. don't have a buddy with me, I have already preset my plan. So I'm going to follow through. Right. Or right? someone's going to call you and say, I need you. Exactly. That would be your exit strategy. So we are incredibly honored to be your advocate and your ally in figuring out how to live an amazing life. Moving forward with the Decker team. Moving forward.